folks. Oh. Welcome to the Historical Fencing Guild. Uh, I'm Nick Tockert, and this is our weekly live stream. We don't have anybody here just yet, but that's to be expected. I know you all tr trickle in, so I'll just start the spiel now for the people who don't know. The Historical Fencing Guild is brought to you by the letter S, as in Simple Sword. Yes, folks, if you want to learn how to sword fight during this lovely lockdown we're all experiencing, and as we come out of it, consider the Simple Sword. Right now, for Kindle uh, Unlimited users, it is free to download. This is your chance as a LARPer, as a fencer, as a HEMA guy, to get better with techniques maybe your buddies haven't seen or figure out how to patch what's wrong with you. And that's what I'm all about, folks, helping you be a better version of you than you are today. The Historical Fencing Guild is also brought to you by my lovely patrons. If you want to support, I will put the link or simply go to the Historical Fencing Guild on Patreon, look for the little cartoon boot, and we'll be good to go there. I've seen we got some folks flitting in and out. Um, if you are, please mash that like button. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm important and I need to be shown more. All right. This week, we've got a lot to talk about. Before anything else happens, I want to put a big shout out to Jim. That's uh, James Robertson. He is the guildy, the, the man in the can, the armored behemoth who, you know, normally makes my life ever so difficult to fight because some idiot told him put a shield in his hand anyway it's his birthday and he's turning 35 again if anybody wonders i don't care if it's good enough for women it can be good enough for men so happy birthday jim uh, you have been in my the beverage is just about as always uh the walmart knockoff black cherry mio pardon the the uh potato grade Camera, we are experiencing our usual technical difficulties as I have been hounding my internet supplier. One of these days, I will come through in crystal clear HD. The reason we are not in the the garage right now talking about fighting techniques is that it won't reach that far right now. So, we're going to keep moving. And I, as always, for friends on Facebook who prefer, I will be taking messages through my messenger to answer your pressing questions or address them. And yes, I was requested to wear my brand new glorious semi-tactical Hawaiian shirt, and I am. You are welcome. To the people asking, no, it does not glow in the dark tragically, but I wish it did. Okay, this week, in the book, while, while I wait for people to come in, um, we're going to be talking about setting up your list field. We also might talk about uh, the the games and teaching techniques. We'll see. Glorious! Glorious, thank you, Steve. Is it not beautiful? I told Amanda the only way it would be better is if it actually glowed in the dark. And she looked at it. We may order a second one and paint the flowers on to, with glow in the dark. That would make me inordinately happy. And yeah, I am really off the books today, folks. I'm kind of off the rails. We've been hit by storms for the last three days, and it's been a little intense around here. Oh. I got to be very careful. Thank you. Uh, we're joined by the lovely and creative Ren Contessa, who one day will, get, will grace the airways, if not on her own channel here, just so folks can uh, bask in her glory. Now, um... As a treat, because I know that uh, it, setting up your list field can be a little dry, I dug out my favorite personal and loner throwing knives to talk about them. Because I know so when you can't sword fight, there are things you want to do slave to the field to keep your mind sharp and have you doing something other than playing Warface badly while your net crashes and you engage in rage against uh, well-meaning Russians. Ah, but, and I'm sorry, my throat's a little dry, so I'm going to be sipping that a whole lot today. When we're uh, talking about uh, setting up your, your training area, 
people have this misconception. They see like, oh, you teach people to sword fight. You need either like the gymnasium dojo, like, you know, with no mercy, kick the balls or something on the wall and a bunch of black clad neo-Nazi wannabes tell everybody to commit crimes against humanity as a martial art. Sorry, I'm in a mood shot at somebody. I'm okay with that. Uh, probably pay for it later, but I'm okay too. When in fact, what you need to teach somebody is A, the knowledge. If you are learning, don't teach, okay? What I mean, I'm not, you're always going to be learning, always improving, yada, yada, yada. But if you just started out, Unless it's a partner and you're only going through the same stuff with, with supervision, don't teach it. Teaching needs a... Uh, whoa, I've got the first comment. Let's see what we got. Oh, abs... Oh. Yes, yes. Uh, we got a message from Steve uh, highlighting my passionate love for Hawaiian shirts. Naturally, they were, you know, I've outgrown a few, and a, quite a few were lost in the flood. So I'm slowly rebuilding in fatty size because God bless the internet. But, uh, yes, I was actually looking, and I'll put this out there. Not mad. I'll try to find the picture. I actually, when I was in the SCA, I would fence in a... Uh, God, it was offensive. These poofy black and gold uh, patterned pants that just hurt people's soul. A yellow uh, sailcloth, because it was one layer puncture resistant tea tunic, and this black and gold uh, Hawaiian print shirt. I loved it. it. I had people offer to pay me money not to wear it, but you know me better than that, folks. You know, I'm going to enjoy it. And, you know, it went so well with, with the glasses and everything. Um, I may have some pictures from many years ago tucked away. I'll see if I can find them, and I'll post them up on the uh, on the guild lists. But uh, So I'll post that up on the Facebook uh, Historical Fencing Guild public group. Now, I know HFG is some kind of Arabic something, so I occasionally get some confusion. But at this point, I've been calling this for a decade and some change. I'm not really going to change it, so we're going to roll. But, um, sorry. Talking a lot, not saying much. I am looking for a good Hawaiian shirt patterned Swordmaster's jacket or one. You know, I hope I can lose enough weight that I can then wear this over a fencing jacket because I think that would be in the words of my good buddy Lito who I miss dearly tough. Lito took an arrow to the knee and stopped being an adventurer I raised my glass to you bud you were missed anyway how oh, I'm in a mood today you guys better hop on the comments to keep me keep me saying because I'm really just uh you know I'm here to kick butt and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of bubblegum. But back to setting up your list. What you need is, I would say, a minimum about 12 foot per side square, roughly flat area that you can keep people from going in. Okay? You have to have that much for people to fight. Now, you could, if you have a smaller area, you can fight with shorter weapons. Obviously, but that gives a minimal that lets somebody take three large strides that keeps the flexibility, but keeps the press where they can't run away. You give me a big field to fight in and I will. Oh, that's beautiful. I will. I will run away. I will pick my battle. Um, I believe in shady defensive tactics as a gimpy fencer. I always have, I always will, you know. A uh, little bit too much of Zoro and Robin Hood in me to stand and fight there. It's just not my style when it comes down to that. If I have room, I'm going to utilize it. I'm not going to yell parkour like Harry Dresden, but, you know, I've been known to go up and over things. 
and people. Ah. I may have launched an airborne assault once on, on a fighting line that nearly got me into heavy fighting. But getting back to topic, and I <laughs> makes sense. You know, I've said so much, Ren, I don't know, my dear, what makes sense, but I'm sure you're right. Oh, anyway. Oh, exactly. Okay, I'm going to route that to the fair fight. Yeah, no, no. Um, a fair fight is one where you have a chance to lose. And there's only two reasons you should engage the enemy. I'm going to violate some, oh, you're heroic. Dump that. The only time to engage the enemy is one, if you have no other option or overwhelming force. That means you want to fight somebody, that's fine. You're going to do it with 20 of your best friends for every one of theirs. And they're going to be good enough to take out three or four apiece. Then roll, buddy. But otherwise, no, nah, no. Nah. You choose your fight. And when you are one-on-one, -on -one, you still have that mentality. Never go in. If you're not sure, don't. The, the, one of the great lessons in any combat, anybody who fences, fights, spars, when in doubt, get the hell out. I will always preach that. I try to leave the, the H word off, but let's say I am on a caffeine-fueled, air-conditioned rant right now, and I intend to keep this up for just about as long as you guys have me, and, and I keep getting, you know, really awful, awesome ideas, you know, pinged to me. My buddy Steve, I suspect, is trying to find the best tactical Hawaiian shirt available. At, or that's a, that's a chef coat. I could almost fence in that. I see. I like where your mind is going there, Steve. I like where your mind is going. Just make sure whatever goes well with the yellow because the glasses are a standard. I actually need to get the polarized version of these next time. These are like semi-polarized. But, man, I'd love to get the, the, the uh, glare cutters. But these also c should come with uh, under... Under a uh, barrel firing revolvers and long coats. But, you know, I'm sorry. I am that big a geek. And I, thank you. I've got five viewers on. Uh, please, if you can, comment. I want this to be interactive. And if you like it all what I'm doing, uh, mash that like button up in the corner so that YouTube knows I'm pretty cool. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate your time. But let me get the other thing. Less fields. Yes, like Red says hi. You should like her because she's gonna have a channel someday, and it's gonna be awesome. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday and for the rest of her life. Okay. Um. Let me see. I'm getting a message. Yes, absolutely. I. Something like that were to come in a Connex box dropped at the back of my house. I would not be for, uh, uh, upset, Steve. You know, one of these days, my buddy Steve's business is going to take off and he's going to make uh, Nicolas Cage's uh, Lord of War look like a sissy. And I approve of that, too. Because at least I want the good guys to win. If people are going to be stupid, at least let the good guys win. I really am in a mood tonight. Okay. Um, <laughs> got another message. Shout. Okay. Shouting out to uh, shout out to my buddy Ben. He got cut from his employment uh, because schools are cutting teachers left and right. He's looking for a job. He's a great guy, and, and I'm pulling for you. He's also making a game, and as soon as it's up, as a fellow game designer, I'm going to plug it for him because he's a good guy. And years ago, I got to play test an early version, and and I would love to get these sticky, pudgy hands on that and some matching minis. So Ben, throw me some love. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. When you're setting up, make sure you have room to fight. Make sure there is a nearby table so that the gear can be put down when you're talking. Make sure there's hydration available, and make sure there's light. Now. If, if we're looking at that, I actually have a real simplified picture toward the end of here. It's almost like this book 
is really – and most of you guys, if you've been following this week after week, you're getting a huge portion of the book. That's me having faith in my viewers. Please, if you have it, buy the book. And then if you see me write comments, I'm going to be, wow, I just awesomed a bottle, a can of, you know, Mountain Lightning, because that's how I roll, uh, right off the table by sheer, you know, the static in my hair today. I don't know. But you want a list field to be simple, okay? You can do it cheap. Use bright colored rope. Uh, well, Menard sells these really great push in the ground uh, poles. You just run your rope through them. They're only like a couple bucks a piece. Get five, not four, because you don't want to be like a WWE wrestler coming under the ropes and over the ropes every time you're going to trip and fall on your face. Trust me, I've seen the most agile fencers in the world. Step off that field and face plant because they're not in fencing mode anymore. And you're going to be leaving that area tired, sweaty, and slightly disoriented. If you're having a, a, enough workout to get a workout and learn something, your body should not fully like you at the end of it. I'm not saying hurt yourself. I'm saying you will have some ramifications. Okay? Cool. Now, this is a quiet night because I, I'm, I'm running against some drunken rants. So I know that Friday nights happen. But, hey, we, we might catch people in the background. Uh, okay, let me see. I'm getting messages. Yes, folks, I am live. Okay, um, so that that being said, oh, what did I want? Oh, yeah, set up a camera. Guys, a lot of people are camera shy. A lot of people are camera shy. And some, some of you are uh, hesitant. You're like, oh, I don't want anybody to see me fight. Oh, and so there are a lot of videos I've had to, to record, show people who I was sparring with, and then they request I delete it, which stinks for me because I can't put it up here. It stinks for them because you don't get that that uh, record of progress. We have the technology with a cell phone and, and a small bracket. I mean, here, I'm going to show you something. Let me get a little behind the scenes. But uh, I'm going to do this so that, you know, none of my stuff is too apparent. Uh, but... Oops. I have this little guy. Now I have other brackets. This is the one I use as a secondary uh, device when I have my whole workspace going. But uh, I can just prop this on a table, set the camera up, you know, whatever, and it just records. And then I don't have to worry about it. We have the most advanced technology, in, you know, in human history and a huge chunks of it we carry in our pockets, and we don't take it terribly serious because we're so used to it. But why not? Use it. Record how you fight. Watch it. And then go, wow, how would I beat me? And then, here's the horrible thing, you can record the people you fight. You can go, how did they kill me? Because even, I've been doing this 20 years, and even to me, sometimes when people are like, what just happened? If you've gotten into the flow, and especially when you're at that level where somebody isn't necessarily a student, but they're a participant, you've been fighting them for a while, you're just going, da, 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 and you hear the steel ticking, tick, 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 and you guys are having a blast, and you're sweating, and one eye's closing because, you know, you got sweat in your eye, and your hair's all, all muffed down, and she's going, bah, 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 bah. yeah, good. How did you kill me? I have no idea. And you stagger and you hydrate like this. Mm. You need, 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 need to be able to record and look back what you did, how you did it. And then you can start going, what works for you and what doesn't? If something works for you, it's not as important as knowing what doesn't. Because if it's what doesn't, just stop doing it. But if something works for you, you need to know why. It's not just doing it more, it's knowing when to do it. 
on a simple setup like this, all, always think in terms of a seat for the ref if they're not up moving around. I'm dynamic. I'm in people's faces. But I'm not careful, you know. They're never, they might even trip over me. But you want a seat for every spouse or girlfriend. Now, all, figure every fighter is worth two to three other people. Have seating safe. Because then when stuff goes down, you can talk about it. You can ask, what did you see? How did that work? And we can go from there. It's very, it's very simple. It's like what I do. What I do, my approach to just about everything mechanically in life is what is the simple, reproducible way to make it work? What works? I don't want, you know, ornate is beautiful in artistic expression and slowly uh, creating something that takes time is a gorgeous thing. But when it comes to the mechanics of something, if you're teaching somebody to fight, you don't want this ornate, swirly energy. You want efficient. You want to get in, do the job, and get done. Now, some people, it's more fun. They want that dynamic. They want the swirl. They want the flourish. That's as much as why the dance is as much as the fight for some of them. Now, some people I know have come in like, Dude, what? I work security. I'm getting the shit beat out of me at these concerts. They gave me a riot shield. What do I do with it? Okay, bro. We can work with that. You know, um, I'm scared. They won't let me have a gun, but they give me a stupid flashlight. We can work with that, too. I have that element of people. Mm. That's good. Wet and caffeine is a beautiful thing. And I do love caffeine. But uh, I've been prattling, so I'm going to take a second. If, if anybody has any questions, and you know me personally, that's why my messenger's up. I know sometimes face uh, YouTube, especially with the, the glut of people it's getting, gets squicky when people try to comment. Or you don't want everybody to know what you're commenting. Feel free to, to send me, you know, whatever you 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 know you're asking about within reason you know and you know we'll go from there or fire here a lot of times we have some really knowledgeable people um i'm getting asked for when i'm live as usual while live so uh We'll, we'll talk because I know there's some 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 things and I, I'm getting to the point where I've been doing this for uh, 11 weeks and I've mostly covered my book of course 11 weeks of, of survey is going to cover that but I will gladly answer any sword questions any uh, writing questions, Anything related to that, too. So, Because I, I could sit and talk at you. But I don't... I don't want to just sit and prattle. Nobody wants to sit and watch me prattle. Well, maybe you do. If you want me to, sit and prattle. Since, since I'm not getting a lot of feedback, I'm going to jump ahead. Now... Like I said, your list field is very simple. Do you? We have what all do we have in here? The breakdown. My curriculum is based on a four-week curriculum. This is the basic four-week getting somebody to learn who's never held a sword. I, I take about a month. Now, will that make you great? No, that would be a lie. And anybody who says I've been a master and a Go two hundred fight guy. I've seen these videos. One of them, I don't know if you've seen it. The guy's like, "This was helped by my friend John. He's a special operations guy or special forces guy." Now I vague. I am a fat civilian. Okay, I would go so far to say as I am a gimpy fat civilian. I have never heard of a military branch being. Supported by a special forces 
guy who got in street fights. I met some folks. And if Special Forces guys are going hand-to-hand, guys, I love that, Special Forces guy. If they're engaging somebody at point close, somebody's getting hurt and probably dead. Because, see, they usually use this new technology called a gun. So, open-handed patty cake is superhero and movie stuff. I You don't see a lot of it. In, in my experience in survival situations, too many people understand the benefit of weapons. Weapons are wonderful for smart multipliers, especially against people who don't have them. That's a little political. Probably shouldn't have said it. But, so I can, eat, you know, we'll see. I'm going to take a break from this because we have enough people. Let's talk one of my favorite subjects, throwing knives. Now, um, quite a while ago, I was messaged, what are my favorite throwing knives? And I kind of broke it down. And since I knew this video was coming up and I can't come out, I want to talk about some things. I have bigger versions. These are uh, their bud case specials, I believe. I think they might be made in Pakistan. And I need to clean them up like a lot of my gear. Basically, they've got some pitting. I got the rust off, but I have to polish it out. These are about as small and light as a throwing knife should be. My hand is cramping. That's okay. But uh, that's what I get for a 1 a.m. Uh, blues guitar. Anyway, these are tiny to the point of almost useless in my mind as a throwing knife. They're good. They're based on Gil Hibbins' design, and these are the small, small versions. And I can throw these dudes. Let me show you what the – I consider these almost the Cadillac of throwing knives. They are uh, some of my favorites. These are – had these were – these are not actually mine because I would never put knives like this away in this condition, so I have to clean them up. But these are Gil Hibben uh, – what is it? 0947B and crafted in China. But these – are our, our uh, Gilhibbon medium throwers, as I that's why I refer to them as cord wrapped black metal, great knives. They grip well, that you could not do most, you know, cutting applications comfortably. Lots of them, yeah. Uh, these are great, great knives, but uh, they uh. They're among my favorite. I don't, I don't, these are on loan. These are leftovers from either Steve or Jim or somebody else. And I don't want to claim anything that isn't mine. But these are good. And if you have the money, obviously, if you were looking for what is a good round knife, and you'll notice I am blade gripping it. That's because it is only sharp on this shiny bit. And shockingly, a knife won't. Well, thank you, Steve. Um, Wow, okay. So these are mine, and that is awesome. They, uh, these guys th throw very, very accurately. They are balanced superbly. Let me see if I can get the point. The point of balance is about at the grip. It's almost impossible to get because of the, uh, there we go. These are balanced great. These are medium grade knives. These are great throwers. And they they are great. Great, great knives. And I know I'm hard. We have, but I will tell you this. If you're looking to get into knives, and I think Steve, these used to be not his. He, he'll, he'll agree. You want to go with slightly larger, slightly heavier knives than what you're expecting to go with. Because the weight is going to help keep the knife stable. It's going to help keep the knife on point. And it's going to give it the penetrating power on top of the throw to make them go. Now, let me see. I, I bumped something. Okay, I'm still here. Cool. We have these guys. These guys are also by Gil Hibben. And they are just... These, these are made for people like me who, like, who are used to the feel of... Uh, of blade throwing. 
There's no 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 guard, no grip. They fit. They still fit comfortable enough in the hand that if you needed to knife with them aggressively, you know, to shank, it's a verb. It would be doable. I'll talk about that in a second because I will talk about my my go to usual knives, and people will laugh after you've seen these high end ones. But these balance just. These are the International Hall of Fame knives. These are just. These are great, and what it does is it lets you by feel flip because when you're throwing a knife, you measure in rotations per stride. So as you get away from the target, you take fixed steps, and you learn after a while with a given knife how many times it will tumble end over end in the air as you throw it to get it to hit. It is a... um. It is a skill. It is, and it is a great, it is a great skill for learning ranges. That's why I still teach it. I never do anything for just one reason. There's always a bit of almost duplicity in me. Very rarely a moral duplicity, but there's always an extra thread. So, if, in the case of teaching throwing knives as a sword master, it makes people more understanding of what distance their range covers, what can be done in that distance. Am I a fan of a tactical uh, throwing knife as a weapon? Not really. I would far rather keep my knife than throw it over there on a whim. But as a team building exercise, as an accuracy building exercise, as something to do when no one else shows up, there's something to be said for it. And it's really good for teaching you how far away beyond your reach, beyond sword reach, someone is. Because understanding range and timing, no matter what the style, you could be doing Bagua, you could be doing Tai Chi, you could be doing SCA Heavy, you could be doing Eskrima, you could be, uh, I don't care, you could be Drizzt from Menzo Branazin. Sword fighting is all about range, and it's all about timing. Okay, accuracy is, is part of it, but uh, being able to say, it will take me this long to poke them. I have an opening that's going to be open this long. Can I get in? Can I not? Or can I reach them, or are they too far? Are they too close, and it's going to gum up that attack? Knowing these things, these basics that aren't always talked about, very, very hard to just look at a picture in a book and say, oh, I get that. Or why learning to fight is hard. It's why learning music without knowing the uh, written music language is incredibly difficult. Now, for years I talked about my personal favorite knife, and I hadn't counted these because these were on loan, so now my, my game's a little off. But when they start out... Oh, I've got some messages. Uh, you know what? If you, if you can uh, afford it, you go right ahead, Steve. If you, yeah, if you want a pony, I'm sorry I missed that. I was mid rant. You you get yourself a pony, man. You're kind of high on my my books right now. Uh, I'm all about pets. Just be nice to the ones you have. But okay, this is my this is my set of these knives. You will see what years and years of use does to them. But. If you are relatively poor, if you can find them, I recommend... Oh, God, Jim. Wow. Did that get shot? Strange things happen occasionally. And that one... I, I clean. No, it got cleaned up and there was pitting. Okay, I see what happened. So I'm going to grab one that isn't bad. This is a Timberwolf TW-22. Used to be a staple at Bud K, and then they went away. This is w one of my favorite throwing knives of all time. It is lighter than, than the big big gills, a little bit around the weight of the little ones, but it's larger. 
double-edged, very sharp, which normally is edgy, and, and you, know, you may or may not want that. Solid grip here. What I like is it has a, um, a grip stop. And because much more apparent on mine. They have one, or one constant flaw, and that is this is a rubberized grip that is essentially kind of melted onto the blade. And there's a post of the rubber that goes through a, a hole right here, and obviously there's right here. And it keeps it from sliding. Well, as you do these, these will get dorked up. And after a while, they become they throw the weight off a bit. So this is what they look like factory stock. They're very pretty. But what do they look like after a decade or two of use, Nick? Why, thank you, mysterious squeaky voice. They end up looking like this. Now, I know this is ugly. This is 1980s uh, van parked in the, uh, man, you, not even save a lot. This is like a Big Lots van out front ugly. That's because I painted it bright orange. I painted it bright orange so that I could find it when it got in the dirt. And then I used and used and used. You'll note the uh, plastic sheeting is gone. I think that makes these throw just a bit better because there's more tumble to it. It slightly moves the uh, weight balance, but it puts it right about there. So these are knives. I'm going to repaint them. I'm going to spend the money when I get a chance to get glow in the dark fluorescent spray paint because these things happen. Oh no, they're going to they're gonna be annoyed. Oh no. I, I did not realize I was imitating that person, but if they're annoyed, ask me how little I care as I'm holding, you know, a bright orange worn out fluorescent throwing knife. And yeah, I have a full set. Now the paint is beat up, but you'll notice there's not a speck of rust on these because these are my service knives. Why I like these. I will actually be making, the next time I make uh, trainers, I will be making a trainer out of these. Why? Because this locks in positive. You're not going to slide up the grip. Don't put your finger there. I mean, you can, but don't. So you have a very nice little emergency knife. I've considered actually taking paracord and wrapping one of these handles just to see how it feels. But, uh, I could fight with this knife, knife fight style, very comfortably. And that's why I like them. I, wanna, I don't want a monotasker, in the words of my man, Alton Brown. Oh, I want something that's going to be useful. That's why I actually kind of prefer the, the, the Gil Hibben cut. Because this, to me, is a knife. What do I mean? If I have something like this on my belt, sorry, my eyebrow is itching. I don't know what that means. I could prep food with this. You see that grip shift? Did you see that? That's because I worked in a kitchen for a while. And I spent some time with my buddy, Steve. One of the trade-offs he did was he fixed my cutting grip. And you could just, well, you got to get that little gnarl in. And you can slice things up. This knife will knife. Not for all things, Darth Brown. Darth Brown is the biggest dom on the planet, and God bless it, I love him. Wow. Now, I kind of want to see uh, Alton Brown and uh, Gordon Ramsay get in some kind of physical altercation. I'm not sure what lightsabers, pool noodles, I don't care, but I kind of want to see it. has nothing to do with anything. This week is off the rails, folks. Oh. But it's also what I'm about. Now, why do I take the so, so tongue-in-cheek? Okay, I've shown the, shown the knives I have here. And Timberwolf is the same company that makes my little tiny hatchet that uh, Jim gave me. And like I said, I still love this. And this throws surprisingly well for a light hawk. But this is going to throw much closer to a knife than a tomahawk. Because a tomahawk has a lot more weight. A throwing axe or... <laughs> See, this is where my background, I got to go to a couple of the uh, the Lumberjack games. And don't be all pervy about that whole, I'm a Lumberjack and I'm okay. These dudes are serious business out West. Anybody who still lives by a manual 
tool and the chain toss needs to be taken with respect. But Lumberjack Games is kind of like the Highland Games. You know, there's caber tossing type stuff. on with roll bugs. Log rolling, which is crazy. Competitive uh, speed chainsawing, which is as insane as it sounds. But my favorite event to watch was the double blit bit axe toss. So they would do axe throwing, but with a full leg double bladed uh, felling axe. That's insane. This is a hop talk. This is end over and woof, woof, woof. And you'd hear the woof, 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 thud. One time, SNG, I got to see a dude take a, oh, I want to say it was a eight. It might have been a 16 pound splitting ball. Huge. Think of the a sledgehammer with. Having had a love affair with an axe, and you get this device made for splitting wood, you know, logs into pieces you can put in the fire. Nice tools. You know, I got my first car working with one of those, but and just chunk it about 30 feet, 40 feet, and you know, I'm trying to, to pace it off in my head. Destroy a target just to prove it could. I suspect alcohol was involved. But That kind of ruined me. So I take throwing weapons as amusing, you know, thrown weapons. And that's an old SCA term. That's what they call it when they have contests there, thrown weapons. And they usually do axe, uh, knife, and spear. Spear is fun. I dig spear. I, spear, I dig spear trucking. I dig, uh, like, javelins are awesome. I also dig the bits of track and field people don't talk about where it's like shot putting and stuff. Anytime you're taking a heavy object and just yeeting it, I believe is the, is the word these days, across the field, that's entertainment. And as a swordsman and as a, a student of melee combat, a student of period combat, that's where you see interesting things where, oh, we don't have projectile weapons. We are the projectile weapon and boulders are being tossed. That's pretty dang cool. Now, I'm not going to try to do a manual on that. I did actually try to do a uh, caber tossing in my front yard as a young man, and I got in trouble because there were divots dug and the grass was all messed up. But you do things like that when you grow up in the woods, and it's fun. And I could not do it now. <laughs> okay, wow. Uh, poop. I'm actually, let me see. <laughs> I got somebody, I put I'm live, and they were confused, thinking I'm de I had some kind of ailment. Uh, <laughs> hey, cool. Cool. No, 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 no. That's uh, Rex. I, we are visited by the illustrious Al. Uh, Probably my favorite Olympic fencer of all time. Uh, yeah, no, Al. Uh, he does Spartan races, and those are cool, and those are BA. Um, if I ever get any level of uh, distance stamina back, I might train for something like that. Throwing spears is fun. I think we need to bring more of that style entertainment. There's too much screen time for adults. You know, they're starting to do, uh, like, clubs where they meet up to throw axes and stuff. And I think that's wonderful. I think physicality and, and such is fun. And, hey, Al, lurk, uh, listen, comment. You're, I, I will throw commentary out and discuss what's in the list, you know, in my book and training people and all that stuff. I can hear that man's name. I believe it's Eduardo Magliotti, but my speech impediment 
really wants to beat hard into that. So I apologize wholeheartedly if I did. Six golds, 13 total Olympic medals across 12, 24 years. There is something that needs to be discussed. And uh, part of it, and this is a good, good, good segue, is the difference between period training weapons, modern training weapons, and understanding something. Uh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna sketch along politics just a little bit, or current events. But there is a lot going on. A lot of scary things are going on, and for uh, reasons that may be justified, reasons that aren't justified, and reasons that might be social engineered, uh, a lot of uh, unrest is going on. And I have very, very strong opinions on. Uh, that whole subject, but I'm going to skirt that because of the forum. I will say this, okay? As things happen, as the world changes, maybe for less than positive for a time before we, as a people, uh, get our brains back together and stop being cruel to each other, beware old men with uh, dangerous skill sets. Are we are again at a point in life where wherever you stand, people misconstrue as it's popular that the gray hairs you know, or gray beards or you know streaks in my lovely case. Oh, well, they're they're just dinosaurs. They're too old. They're too weak. If there are young people who watch this, which I hope there are, because I want to teach the, the, the newest people to get started and then pass them around, along. That's what I do. Uh, if, if you see an old person who's been involved, and not just an old man, an old, but an older person who's been involved in things, as many of them have, do not write them off. Some some of the most devastating swordsmen I met at the time were in their 40s and 50s. Uh, some of them are still quite devastating into their 60s, especially when you deal with uh, more modern uh, fencing equipment. Now, uh, why, why does that matter? Why does that overlap? Well, modern fencing equipment especially is much lighter than earlier period fencing equipment. It's evolved. As it evolved to be more of a sport, it became lighter so that it could be faster and safer. And there is some uh, really fascinating backlash in uh, the sport fencing communities, in the Olympic communities that I've been following. You know, wanting heavier fencing blades, wanting stiffer fencing blades, so that, uh, especially like the saber, you get these whip shots. Something very similar happened has happened with the uh, ch modern Chinese sword styles because of <sighs> Wushu steel. Wushu steel is, a, is something that when I speak of it, is used in making tournament weapons and demonstration weapons for um, Chinese martial arts. And I really wish Sword Sage were, was on, because I would love to he, he could go for a year, so I can too, uh, on the subject. And the problem with Wushu Steel is, yes, it's very, very shiny. It's polished to be uh, nearly, if not, mirror-coated. But it's exceptionally blah, 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 wibbly. To the point you see the demonstration mo movements. You see the, the, the blades and they... Whoa, 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 whoa. They'll, they'll be doing these spear thrusts. In the end, it's just like... This was originally as a safety thing. Because for a while, the Communist Party tried to kill the concept of martial arts because they were tied to religion. And there was always a suppression of a populace's right to defend themselves in any controlled state. That's always present. 
And that, you know, for China, because it was so involved with its, uh, the soul of the, the, the culture came back, but there's been caveats and things I'm not really, uh, I, I'm not comfortable with, and they're offensive. <laughs> Interesting. I will. No, Rex, actually, look it up. Uh, I know what you're referring to, and it is shocking. You know, I have some pr very profound uh, opinions regarding all the amendments, because right now, say, the uh, right of free speech is under assault. Uh more so than usual. But the Second Amendment also has plus, and, and you can see how it's done in other countries. I en I enjoy the uh, understanding as a historian, as a student, the different approaches. This is how Messers were born in Germany, because they couldn't they weren't defined as a sword. This is how um, how the habit of carrying knives under a kilt. And, and where knives were stored throughout uh, the uh, British Empire and Great Britain as it's known today. I agree. No one does give the Third Amendment enough love. I don't want, if I'm right, I don't want soldiers in, in my home. Thank you very much. But uh, well, peaceably assemble. Yeah, pe peaceable assembly. But uh, remember, I am dyslexic, discalculate. And ambidextrous. So keeping ordered list ordinal has never been my 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 tact. I'm admitting that, and I'm slightly caffeine deficient today. Oh, but I have to drink this very slowly, or else I have to go to the bathroom, and I have a, probably another hour of broadcast. My point being, there's always been a technical... The government says you can't have this. How do the people work around to be able to maintain defense? And it goes back and forth. And uh, I personally believe the vast majority of problems can be solved with education. And well, let me check. We got some 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 feeds here. Yep. Okay. Cool. We got it on my YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, somebody was worried about my health because they misunderstood why I said I am live, not as to be I am not a live. Or, or, no, I am in no life, more than usual life threatening situation. I mean, we do have riots and a pandemic and uh, graboids and the fake courts are at war. And blah, 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 blah. I'm kidding on a couple of those. But I'm eagerly looking forward to the next Tremors movie. Uh, you got to keep that going. I'm gonna. I switch topics pretty pretty quickly, but uh, we need to defend ourselves. We need to uh, understand how they do. And in China, like I said, going back as martial arts were, they were allowed wushu steel, which is this wibbly. Uh, that that's action old. When I used to have practices with Ren Contessa many, many years ago, I bought this rubber training knife, and it finally gave up the ghost. I think I gave it the broken one to her. We called it the wibbly knife because not only was it flexible, but it was inordinately flexible. So this little thing would be like you, it looked like a nice little Tonto knife till you moved like this, and it went... Blah, 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 blah. When you have... a uh, Getting all the way back to the source, I can't actually maintain a line of thought. It's just never straight. Shut up. Uh, the, the Wibbly knife, yeah, had great fun, you know, but you couldn't really... Training with that knife, you could... Because you could go like this, and the knife would be whipping around and smacking somebody. It turned into a flail weapon. And you, you see some of the stylized combat evolve to that. Well, getting back to uh, specifically uh, uh, fencing, especially saber fencing right now, 
there are attacks that are consistently being made that are essentially whip strikes sideways with the flex of the blade. Does that work? Does it score a point? Absolutely. Is it metagaming? Is it tactically wrong? Does it do nothing from somebody who wants to keep a level of defensive practicality? Now we start running into problems. And there's a bit of realization that maybe it's become too specialized. Now the foil has not changed much. And as long as it's been in, in use. It's been a wonderful tool. You know, the Epe is probably the purest. Still what it is because the the, the uh, it bear, ran parallel at the time with the pardon my enunciation uh, Epe du Combat which is the French sharpened Epe. And the idea was they would have a duel Slightly more civilized, duel was to first blood. These were uh, gentlemen, often, excuse me, uninitiated un, un in uh, certain levels of manual labor. Therefore, they didn't have the same wrist strength as somebody who worked for a living. So you would have something with like an app, which was this little epee, triangle cross blade, that was sharpened so that they could get a, a, a basically a tip cut a surface wound, thus, you know, saving their honor, establishing, you know, their uh, dominance, etc., etc. Fascinating. Dueling culture is really interesting. It runs counter to just about most of what I believe. But I also say that if the, I believe civility would be, well, would be more maintained if there was a ramification for being uncivil. I think one of the great flaws of the internet is the sensation and belief of anonymity and the actual anonymity that is, uh, let's see if I can do this, that is uh, permitted to, uh, to happen, people can get on and uh, they can say whatever they want and be as vicious and mean. And other than yelling back, you have keyboard commanders. And it's really different when you're in somebody's you know relative face to be that rude. And the the fact that there were ramifications did civilize society. I still kind of lean towards an armed society as a polite society. I think a heavily educated society is a more polite society. And I think, well, anyway, I want to know. I I was prattling, and if you could get back to the source, uh, especially Al, what do you think about the the uh, calls to stiffen like a saber blade to make it perform more like a a period saber? You know, the gymnasium sabers were much heavier uh, versus the modern stylistic changes that have been born from the lightness and the whippiness of the blade. We could get into uh, how you feel about pistol grips versus epe for practical versus uh, sporting, but I suppose that gets more, that's more like comparing a uh, toboggan with a uh, bobsled from like cool runnings. So, you know, I don't know. Please feel free to weigh in. I'm going to have a drink. Oh, God. And yes, yes, uh, again, I am live. Boop. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. So we got that fixed. Now, I, I get passionate on that subject. Oh, by the way, Steve's here. So's the Hello Kitty Crab, but I haven't messed with Steve with this. Who it almost fell in my drink. No, I, I understand Saber isn't your sword. I, I fully understand Saber is not your sword. But I respect your position. Now, see, that is interesting. I did not know Sabre was, was not common in the Midwest. I don't know why that surprises me, but um, that is intriguing. So if you can't see the comments, uh, Al says, so Sabre isn't his sword. And it is not. it is also not common in the Med Midwest. Karma. No, karma would have been if it fell into the drink, Steve. 
but it did not. And we just cracked the hour line. So, epic. Really? It is, I, you know, for some reason I had it registered as you were a, a foilist be primary uh, before Epe. My mistake, and I apologize for any inaccuracy I've represented. I will say the Epe is the purest evolution of the three, in my humble opinion. You know, from... ah, I see. I misunderstood it. So, yeah, I thought you were a primar primarily a foilist, which that's why, because I remember you being very ironically, Al is very much because he's a foilist. The the target area and conventions about the game you play are so crucial. The target area is essentially your torso. It's a little more more uh, complex, but, you know, it's understandable. Because I'm a, a defensive classical fighter, I am all, very often about uh, coming from offline and taking the arm. That negates right away. It doesn't defeat it. And he Al has made some very good points pro right of way. But it's also a more uh, lethal attitude, in my opinion. Does that make sense to you, Al? Because the... the, the oh, yeah. So, famous heart. Really? So, it's requiring harder hits as of 2019. How are they measuring that? Because I thought it was electrical contact. I, I'm not sure how they can measure the... Uh, the force of the impact. Interesting. See, this is what I want. I want to be able to hear. And I realize I'm reading the comments, so allow me to get back into it. I'm sorry. Um, Alpha Foilist. So FIE is requiring heavy, harder hits as of 2019 for Sabre. And that's only at international level. Has it gone USFA yet? Using... Marger blades? Um, I don't know if that's a typo. Knowing you, it's not likely. You're you're usually deucedly accurate. It makes me feel bad about my typing. What's that term? Marger? Marger? Ah. Uh, the FBI is the FIE, I'm sorry. The FBI hasn't dominated fencing yet. The FIE is sponsoring an international contact invest inviting developers to create new technology for registering hits and saber fencing. The objective is to design and manufacture a modern sensor, one that's easy to use, inexpensive and durable for competitions. An FIE contest uh, commission that includes members of executive community and several commissions, councils, as well as sport technical staff, and is responsible for accepting and appraising sensor prototypes. Hold on. That is fascinating. Okay, I repeated it. I'm going to condense it into Nick's speak. The FIE is looking to be able to make trackable impact uh, weapons so that their sensors can read how hard a hit is. This really has huge ramifications for what we do because in, in different things, especially a group like the SCA, when you talk about heavy fighting, heavy fighting has an element, and heavy fighting is using sticks to simulate full-force uh, steel combat. They use rattan uh, inch and a quarter. They're very specific about their diameters. Uh, essentially clubs to simulate the swords. But in that, there's a concept of a light hit and a, you know, and a solid hit and possibly even a heavy blow, where if you hit them, it's on the honor to... To be able to tell, did, would my armor have deflected it or did it hit? Ah. Mar okay. M A R A G I N G blades. Maraging. I'm going to say maraging. I don't think that's right, but it's hurt. Or maraging. Blades are forged from an alloy of tempered steel that incorporates iron, nickel, and titanium. The steel is twice as hard as stainless steel. 
and 85% harder than pure titanium. That micro, that micro, the micro cracks that eventually grow and snap the blade are only 5% as likely to develop in this uh, compared to conventional steel. Basically, you can hit harder, it's less likely to snap. I would love to see that bounce over to uh, the heavy rapier department because apparently we recently had in um, heavy rapier a uh, couple blades fail. Now, mind you, temperature was a major element in that, as I am told, but it's something I track. Fascinating. See, Alan, you were worried you weren't going to pitch in. I don't know. I don't know if Jason Arana is watching right now. Um. Wow. Just wow, sir. Um. Yes, that is a container I would like to avoid with great distance and effectiveness. I'm sorry. I just because. Hey, you know what? One. I don't. Let me check. No one else has popped in. It's a quiet week. A lot of my viewers also watch a couple other shows that are bi-weekly. So some weeks I have more attendance than others. Right now I'm getting a good feed. And if anyone is ever worried about getting lost on the uh, uh, YouTube, please, please, please hop on and message me on Messenger so that I can answer your questions. Okay. Um, no, 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 no goblins were harmed in the making of this footage. Uh, okay, I got a question about the knives. Which is the best knife to fight with? Because I was talking about practicality. Okay, so I'm going to step back from the, the, the fencing video, just the fencing video, but, you know, this subject, just for a second. And we'll get back to that, Al. I'm going. I'm still going to hold for me. If I had to had to fight, I would want this because the lack of guard on most throwing knives for the ease of throw uh, makes it very easy to potentially slide up the handle. I also like that if I chose to, I could add lanyard to this very easily for the same reasons. Plus, this is a very good length of knife, in my opinion. For uh, mischief, I'm not really happy about. I would, if I were fighting with it, I would want probably something like if you could put a guard <laughs> and then so this blade with a bit of guard just to keep from sliding and hybrid them a bit. That would make me very happy because I'm still a big fan of a mostly single edge knife. They're just a little safe, safer. Um. Give me just a moment. Okay, while that loads up so I can see, this is why I keep the audio off on my uh, stuff. But uh, yes, yes. Um, basically, I got sent a, uh, a, a diversionary tactic. And yes, um, okay. I realized something, and thank you. I actually skipped a section of my manual, and I keep forgetting to cover it. Not that it's not important, but it's very difficult to do in a seated position being a uh, sword and dagger. Uh, not sword and dagger. Oh, my brain is just shorted out. Uh, largely due to this slightly malfunctioning uh, image, but uh, sword and cloak, or cloak and dagger. Now, I would love to see like the fencing daggers that I mentioned to Al, because I would love to see a wireless setup for multiple weapons with the kind of sensors they're talking about. That would revolutionize not just your game, but every single uh, fighting art uh, game.
Yes. Yes. Uh, the knife I was talking about basically exists. I've seen it before. I, I actually at one point wanted to send it to uh, Steve. It's a I don't know what to call it. It's an offshoot shoot, but uh, it's Karambit styled forward facing. Oh. Yes. Yes. The the uh, annual uh, fencing, if it's still on. If so, Also, if someone wants to see something interesting, the 27th annual wheelchair fencing is open, is, is happening in Grand Rapids, Michigan this September. Now, assuming that it, uh, assuming that it's still going on, thanks to Miss Rona coming to town, uh, I would love to see that. Possibly even just watch a live feed, because that's. Uh, let's be honest. Those who know some of my health conditions, I was supposed to be quote unquote by the doctors in a wheelchair almost twenty years ago, and. I've been fighting it. I'm doing, you know, I do better every day, but we all know no one lives forever. No one is healthy forever. And I, every day I get up and my legs work is beating a set of odds no one could have imagined. So keeping track of wheelchair fencing is actually something very much in my bailiwick. Thank you, Al. If you happen to find out if they're live streaming that, please uh, send me the link or put it out on the on the uh, Historical Fencing Guild public group so anyone else interested can find it because I I would love to just be able to watch. I want to see what they do because stylistically and how they handle the chairs, it's just, that would be fascinating. I actually got to see some really neat video of, uh, thank you, of uh, geriatric fencing. And don't, don't, don't be cranky. I, I know that there's a temptation to make fun of folks, but it was older people fencing literally with walkers. They had a walk, walker and a foil, and they were they were holding their own. They were doing it, and that tells you that if you love something, you're going to find a way to do it. Hey, th thank you, Steve. I, I try, and it's always a battle because where I give everyone I know miles and miles of uh, latitude and understanding, I give myself virtually none. As soon as I'm off this... Yeah, yeah. I, I hold myself to inhuman standards. That's just, you know, one of my failings. I'm working on it. You should too. But thank you. You, The support of the guild really does more for keeping me sane and reminding me the, that, it, you know, the passion of the stream that I have and, and what I do has value because I forget that. I, uh, I lose sight of that a lot. But yeah, okay. I'm I'm in intensely uncomfortable talking positively about myself in anything other than how I serve others. So uh, moving right along, we uh, I I really want to keep track. And if you could maybe even send me links where I can. Steve, Steve, no immortality, Steve. No, I, I know this is a theory for you. No, one, even if you are, don't tell me online. I'm sure there are agencies that would love to like harvest your spleen repetitively. Trust me, I know. But uh, that being said, if you or anyone else in my group has no buyback, you know, no cost uh, metaphysical upgrades. You want to throw your favorite Gimpy Swordmaster. I'm not signing contracts, but I will take bonuses. Okay. Um, wow, that actually derailed my brain. Well done. The, the immortality is what did it. No, uh, getting back. Getting back, back, back. I would really like to see this technology... And if they can make it something that's affordable, I don't mean like affordable, but something that can be mass marketed, that would really, really help both the uh, the developing the community 
and uh, really tracking what's going on. I'd love to see it, and I'd like to see that eventually conveyed to other weapon technology. That, oh, that fascinates me, and I love stuff like that. I'm a, I am a technophile, you know. I love that. I love the fact they're building a walking Gundam in uh in in Japan right now. I love that they had assorted mecha based things. Because let's be honest, that's the suit of the future. That's the armored suit of the future. It's just tall and walking and that's awesome. You gotta we live in a world uh, that's very dark and scary. You gotta get hold of the fact that we also live it may be a dystopic future. It may be a scary and dangerous, even deadly dystopic future, but it is a future, and there's some cool stuff going on, so you might as well embrace the coolness. That's my version of uh, the offside to the serenity, uh, <laughs> the serenity of acceptance. Anyway. But, uh, let's see, we are an hour 16 in. We're doing pretty good. Um, I want to remind you, the Guild is sponsored by People's uh, Patreon by the purchase of The Simple Sword. It's also sponsored by Nicholas, uh, www.amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Tockert. You'll find the Big Stompy Robots books there. You'll find the... Uh, uh, Simple Sword there. You'll find a few other things really interesting. Melee. That's what I, you'll find the game I developed when I was uh, in the SCA as a sort of chess tactics. It's a really neat get little game. I think you'll enjoy it. It's kind of what I, one of those I cut my teeth on in early game development. But uh, hello, Glenn. Glad to see you there. Um, we were just talking, so, so you know what we missed about... Uh, some new technology coming to the Olympic fencing field and how it could uh, affect the rest of us. And I hope it really hits the public because that would really encourage uh, athleticism. It would encourage historical participation, respect. Just it's a good all around thing. Glenn is writing the uh, Circle of Longres and I, my speech impediment got hold of that. I felt it go, but uh, the definitive reference for Arthurian legend, and I'll be writing the intro to the Excalibur section as my my current work schedule allows, because right now I'm working on my contracts with the uh, ama uh, amazing uh, Mr. Luke Stone of Luke Stone Studios, who created hybrids. I'm doing the, the RPG for that, and it is awesome. We've, we're starting the play test for the quick play. Everything that comes off of that is going to the main one. A lot of juggling. It's exciting. I'm, I'm really proud to be of that. And that's a little all off topic for, for this. But, you know, I also have to keep the lights on. So anybody who likes it, feel free to donate to my, uh, my Patreon. A, do a dollar a month, if anything, does good for my mental well-being. And that's how I afford to get gear for everybody else and then forget to, gear bu to buy gear for me. But uh, that's coming too. And no, Glenn, I have not forgotten you. I'm just, to be honest, the idea of writing a uh, intro about the single most famous class of weapon, and you guys heard me right, class, uh, and the single most famous weapon in Western uh, lore is daunting, even for someone who is as comfortable as words with and we're not going to talk about how many times i've gone over and gone and balled it up because i i didn't think the uh the submission was worthy of the topic so things are coming nothing ever gets lost it just gets moved on my uh sticky note board of uh knowledge power organization you know all that stuff i don't usually have hmm. And if you want to sponsor this personally, hit me up. We'll make things go. And yes, I, I you may find I am plugging people, which I don't normally do. It's a habit I picked up from Brian K. Morris of Rising Tide Publishing. But a lot of people right now are suffering. So anybody who is working through the suffering, anybody who's putting in effort 
to make their world better, I want to build up. And that's part of what the guild's about. It's part about what my channels, my life energy thing is about giving people a hand up, you know. I'm not in a position... As things progress, we will we will probably do a lot of discussion on that subject. <clears throat> but uh, so we've covered that. We talked about wheelchair fencing, which I didn't expect. We talked about uh, modern gear. Uh, I I know a couple. While we're here, I, I know a couple companies were working on uh, like nylon because I and. Uh, polypropylene uh, practice foils to drop the cost, make mass production easier. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Glenn. I try to keep my energy up. This is sort of, this is my passion. Friday nights, if I had people, I'd be fighting and bouncing off the walls and building armor and, you know, telling people they can do all the things they don't believe they can because most of my friends are talented and I have an inordinate amount of attractive women as friends. And, my guy friends are strong, and it's just you. Go, you all are awesome. You're awesome, and I wish you could believe in yourselves as much as I believe in you. All you guys, the folks here, that's Al Gall. You know, that's Steve. That's that's uh, Red. Oh, oh, um, not jousting, not wheelchair jousting, although that's been known to happen. Let me. I want to get the date right. Okay, cool. Um. The 27th annual Wheelchair Fencing Open is happening in Grand Rapids, Michigan in September. So I wanted to... Uh, uh, I was, we were talking about that coming up because a lot of what I do is... Oh, thank, thank you, Ren. Uh, a lot of... My heart. A lot of what I do is about... Uh, Uh, but wait, there's more. Oh my. Anyway, <laughs> in addition to it, they also have op mi mixed open foil epee and save. Oh, that open is a slight call out to if I could get gear and healthy enough to do it, it would be a real opportunity for, for me and anyone involved. If you want to get into uh, collegiate fencing, Al is is looking to make some really powerful moves on that. He's out of uh, Porter. We'll say Porter County. I don't want to tack down. Yes and no. Um, I think the idea of of jousting mentality of your your goal is to unhorse the person is a little dangerous for most wheelchair situations. Unless uh, college and alcohol. Okay, but um, ooh. So, yeah, I don't want people falling out of their wheelchairs, but I don't want a wheelchair to be the limiter to say someone can't learn to sword fight. I've taught blind people to sword fight. I've taught uh, dev I've taught people with severe mental mental and physical handicaps how, how to make weapons go. Uh, people with extreme trauma. Jousting is rather dangerous. Um, I, to those who don't don't know, I, my family actually used to raise horses. My my grandfather raised some gorgeous Arabs, you know, uh, like living fire, just beautiful horses. Uh, and my wife used to actually ride in shows. She was a well, they're not connected. She she rode quarter horses, you know, stout, but. Uh, Western. And so there's a lot of horses around me. That being said, I have mixed reviews on them. Yes, anyone should, can, and I will help 
anyone who wants to. Oh, yes, there are lots and lots of... Okay, I got a message of who have I been keeping from Steve. I have known a great many attractive ladies in my time. That's just an observation. Some come and some go. Not all of them are for you. Sorry, bud. Uh, but you have your own. You're doing really well. Anyway. Uh, you want... Uh, oh, God. Okay. Yes, anyone should be able to... But that you have to be able to learn to fight your fight. Okay? There are two basic approaches to sort to learning to sort of fight. Glenn hasn't been on the channel a lot, so I don't know how much he knows about my approach, but there are two ways. There's the there's an approach where this is how you learn, this is how it goes. This is a very linear uh, it's towards a fixed set of conventions. Modern Olympic uh, fencing, collegiate fencing. Very, very strict, very tight style. Um, some historical groups are that way. You learn Meyer. You fence as Meyer says. You open the book of Meyer, and that's how it's done. There are certain people who hold on to that. Well, I'm sorry about that. It was a joke. It was a joke. <sighs> anyway, and it was. It was a joke. I made, I made a joke to Steve. Please, nobody get mad at Steve. I'm kidding with him. I'm harassing him just a bit, but... Uh, well, yeah. Any the, the other approach is this. I've read most modern fencing manuals, most uh, historical fencing manuals. That is not modern. I mean, I've read a lot of modern ones, whatever. And what I did is I found out that most of them had certain steps that every they all agree. Just about everybody agrees. Yes, you can hear the rooster. You can hear the rooster, and I am just being cocky tonight, so everything is working well. He responds to me being emphatic. Sometimes he thinks things are going wrong. Sometimes he thinks I'm actually challenging his back, back, back! His status. Sometimes I am challenging his status. Uh, but. Ah. Uh, that's right. I am way too smug about that. That made my night right there. Anyhow. Um, anybody, if you look at these, they all have basic starter rules. So what I did is I translated the starter rules, Glenn, into the simple sword. And that's all this is. This book is a plain Jane Americanized English with stick figures away for anybody who's never handled the sword to learn the basics. That's what it's about. That's what it's for. I keep it as low cost as the printers will let me, basically. And I uh, put it out there as free as my contracts and, and entanglements will let me. Because the, I want people to... Uh, I want people to have a chance to learn what I love. And then from there, it becomes a Rosetta Stone, so I can take people like uh, my buddy Sword Sage, who studied vast quantities of Chinese martial arts, you know, focusing on the Jin and uh, some open-handed stuff. And I can take somebody like my buddy John Miner, who uh, specialized in some katana work, a whole lot of Western martial arts, and somebody like Steve, who does things largely with... Uh, Karambit, somebody like Al, who's a collegiate type fighter, I can make middle of the road rules and they can have conversations both on technique and physical conversations. Because for me, sparring is a physical conversation. It really is about can can you uh you know, how does this work? Let's talk about, let's feel. If I do this, you do that. Okay, that maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. 
you might learn something from me. I might learn something from you. And what's great is when you take two people who don't know each other well, but they do know, okay, good. I felt bad about that. Okay. Uh, but they do uh, know the rules that I've established as sort of a general, it literally becomes a physical debate. You know, people call fencing physical chess and it is, but it isn't. I mean, if you're the type of person who intentionally sacrifices one hand to get a kill, cough, cough, Ray, cough, cough. Sorry, I apparently had a douchebag in my throat. But um, if you're the kind of person who uh, sees, you know, they've never fought, but you both know, after they're done fighting, Fighting. Nobody's trying to hurt each other here. This is almost all about, even if you're angry, controlling it. You're expressing physically combat. And yeah, there's practicality. I know I can take something sharp and defend myself. But uh, I know also that I can teach somebody, and we can use that to, make, to empower them. And we can also... Bridge understanding and respect very rapidly. There used to be a joke for legal reasons. I have to say that the groating of people who may or may not deserve it is not commendable or allowable, but the spirit is. And that's nice. One of these days, I may base. I tell you what, Red. I'm going to make a promise to you, my Contessa. One of these days, when I'm working on that project we've talked about over the years, I'm going to include a scene similar enough as an homage to you, so that at least in a fish, fictional universe, you can get something like that out of your system and possibly draw it up for you. If only because I love you that much, Yuri. Sorry. The problem with having friends who are in certain fields, and a couple of the people who watch this, are to 99% of the populace, the, the idea of 007 license to kill is fiction. To 1% of us, of them, not us, I am a fat civilian. I don't ever want people thinking I'm taking any, I don't even lean on valor of another people, okay? I only know through conversation, and, and my friend Scars, uh, that that may not be a jest. But no, 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 guys, no, no. But yes, for you, not only will I do that, we pick the right, send me the right reference art uh, stuff. You know what I mean. And I'll, I'll draw it up for you at least. I don't know if I'll publish it anywhere, but we'll set something up. Uh, but uh, yes, yes. So uh, commentary. Oh, well, yes. Yes, and, and, and no. Um, it was. I think Smiley's People is far more accurate to the vast majority. Most of that goes down. But um, you're not entirely wrong. Uh, Christopher, yeah. for example, at one point uh, during the filming of The Hobbit, no, I'm sorry, Lord of the Rings, Christopher Lee interrupted the director and because he wanted him to say, ah, one, you know, wanted somebody who got stabbed in the back to say, ah. And he's like, um, they don't make that sound. They kind of gurgle out. Say, well, how do you know? Well, because I've killed someone by stabbing them in the back. They forgot he was OSS, also known as British spooks and bad mofos. But, um, uh, so it's one of my favorite stories that that I can you know drag out. It's not one of mine, but it's awesome. 
yes, yes, yes. I, I approve of the message that I just received. Uh, Sorry, guys. Okay. Oh, sorry. And I need to take a moment. And I'm sorry, guys. I got to condense this down because I got two sets of messengers. One was very fun. One wasn't. Uh. A lot of people are hurting right now, and a lot of the league, a lot of people are uh, suffering. And I, I'm, I'm there for you guys, man. I really am, and I appreciate the folks who, uh, uh, who are fighting the internal fight they can't talk about with anybody else. And I'll keep trying to be here for you. Okay, so if you're watching this. There are all kinds of warriors out there. And the ones who are fighting their own demons in, in here, kind of in here. <laughs> yeah, here. <laughs> Had to think about it. No, I'm not a Time Lord. I just really, really owe a lot to Tom Baker. But uh, so thanks for sticking around. And I'm going to get back to my reg regularly scheduled uh, stuff. But uh, no, no, I, I I will always encourage my friends to stay out of jail, and <laughs> no matter how tempting the the source is, I will always uh, I will always uh, wow encourage you guys to to stay out of jail because I, I I need you guys to do well because if I'm not helping folks, um, what why am I here, you know? So, uh, wow. I'm sorry, that, that deflated me for a second. It just, and that's not on you. Don't, don't, don't feel bad. Please, please, please don't feel bad. I, it's what I do. It's not always easy, but it's what I do. And yeah, days will get better. The days will get better. Maybe you'll come down and fight with me. Hope you can. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, we're going to, we're going to talk, uh, Al, if you're still floating, have you tried out any of the uh, polypropylene like foils? Because there's a couple new weapons floating around. Absolutely, you you will always be as innocent as a, you are. The white mink on your shoulder, uh, my Contessa. You know, it uh, purity in 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 its own masterful nature, or better. I don't know. Uh, sorry, like I said, uh, sometimes sometimes you guys you gotta do the work. You gotta be willing to help people in the moment, and I'm glad I can, and and, and I'm glad I did, and I'll always be here to do it. If that means interrupting a live show for a moment, it's a live show. I do it to bring joy and help the people and maybe keep some of my guildies occupied. Never feel bad about something like that. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, I, I'm going to check for, for more questions uh, real quick because my, my stuff's been blowing up and I had to look at somebody else. And yeah, I just, I gotta. Yes, okay. Um, Favorite not, oh, favorite non-edged weapon. I get these favorite questions a lot. I'm really torn on that. Uh, <laughs> there's no way to say this without my beloved friends taking it wrong. The rod 
a roughly three foot long straight stick reinforced that can be used as a cane can be used is probably my all time favorite non edge weapon, obviously because I walk with a cane I've trained with them and I can transfer almost all my techniques. Uh, certain draw cuts would be pointless, but just about everything else can transfer easily to the use of a, a rod, a, a fighting cane. Um, I do like a staff. Again, a short staff about eyebrow ha height I can do some fun things with. Uh, and collapsible batons are cool. Uh, not a big fan of a co-buton, as most people would call them, the little uh, pressure point tools. <laughs> The problem is I've met some people who don't uh, have, uh, yes, they don't have the nerve clusters where you're expecting them, and that can be problematic. <sighs> who? Steve, my cane is only, you know, my cane is roughly 36, 38 inches long. I'm a hobbit. Okay. Wow. Wow. Kneecap a guy. Kneecap the... Kick the hobbit while he's down. But Steve, the hobbit is always down. I know. Punch. Okay. And yes, yes, Glenn. I am a stream of conscious guy. And what I'm rolling, it is like a ball of thunder coming across the plains. Right at you spreading truth, joy, merriment, and inappropriate flirtations. In a caffeine-fueled rant of rage, humor, and just good-natured goofiness brought to you by America's favorite furball, the manatee man himself. Okay, so how, we're starting to get that good back again because I'm feeling my alliteration arise. But, uh... It's all about keeping the, the ball rolling, folks. Wow, I've missed a whole bunch of comments. Uh, first question, yes. Second question, yes. Better better display, not as much. Third question, that would get me in trouble. And her armor is slightly insufficient, but I wouldn't call her on it because I dig the group. But I actually had the book that that was the cover of. Okay. Well, okay. I, I may or may not have confused people by calling Excalibur a class. Um, when, when I'm saying of it, I'm not referring to Excalibur as a class of sword alone, because there's a lot of debate in, in most, but I am uh, comparing... Ex the thing about Excalibur to me is an element... And we might as well get into it, because I've been trying to write this up, and I'll bounce some of, the, some of it off you now. The element of worthiness, you find it in Marvel's take of Molnir. It's not enough, you know, the sword in the stone, it, which I know, according to certain stories, the sword in the stone and Excalibur, two totally different things. I still like the idea that the Lady of the Lake is was actually a blacksmith who used swamp iron to make the first one, but that's neither here nor there. Well, yes, you and I are on the same page, Glenn. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But they don't, and it's an interesting plug for your project. The idea is that across mythology, there's almost always an Excalibur, a weapon of power and might that alters the face of history around it and can only be wielded by the worthy. So as a martial artist, as... A, a swordsman, and as a historian, as a folklorist, as a, and I, you wouldn't think this would overlap, but as a, um, a supernatural investigator, a paranormal investigator, sorry, supernatural. Yeah, I, I watched uh, Fa Moose and Squirrel, you know, go driving around in an Impala. Anyway, it's a paranormal investigator. All this overlaps. The idea of an item of power that is only worthy to the right kind of person is both a temptation and a terror because it, it would force you to be weighed and measured and you could be found lacking. And Glenn's history on that is so fascinating. His approach is so uh, 
wide. I mean, the the the, the detail of his reference. This is not what he's doing is not going to be casual reading. It, and it won't be for everyone. It's going to be the kind of I, I mentioned Molnir. I mentioned Molnir. Uh, and I've had some, some similar things with uh uh sorry. I got another comment. Uh 16 volumes. Yeah. 16 volumes. When you start cracking a thousand pages on the uh, complete understanding of all, all things Arthurian, where it came from, what it means, how it will uh, historically and possibly metaphysically affect uh, society, how it has and how it will into the future, this is a project. I'm proud to be a tiny part of it. Uh, yeah, and yes, you'll notice I leave certain gaffes for you to step in. It's a way of plugging. It's something I practice. Again, stuff I got from uh, Brian K. Morse. Uh, but, uh, yes. Uh, and no, I did not. For those who, who think I missed uh, the contestant's uh, comment on manatees, I did not. I figure that is about an idyllic life for, lifestyle, just hanging out in warm water, chilling, maybe eating, watching some fish go by, not hurting anybody, not really wanting anybody to hurt you. That's pretty mellow. But uh, hence the marvelous manatee man, the freshwater manatee of Northwest Indiana, where I was once upon a time. It's been a year since I've been in the water, and it looks like it'll be another year. I'm going to be frazzled out my, my, my fur ball by the time this is done. Rona! Okay. But yeah, so I'm going to keep working on that. I got a little detailed on that. Um, yeah. Wow, we're, we're almost two hours already. We, uh, next week. Next week, hopefully, I'll be a little more together. We had some real-world things with the weather and uh, some some of my uh, off-camera obligations that I have not a hesitance to do, but I don't like the people who uh, use that as a shield, so I won't get into it. But uh, next week, I will try to go over a sword, and a sword and cloak if it doesn't fall off the back of my mind. And yeah, the, the Rona absolutely sucks. And it's kept me from some people I really care about and some things I that would be really good for my uh, mental well-being. But uh, I am literally praying for an Indian summer where it's like 80 or 90 degrees in October. I, guys, I really... One, I want a really nice Halloween this year. I'm pretty sure it's a full moon. No, 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 no worries. No worries. And uh, yeah. I, I I want fun and I want uh, I want to get in the water and I don't want to think about anything other than ru maybe running an underwater camera because that's one of my great joys in life. But uh, I don't serve anybody by doing that, so it gets pushed aside. That's caveat for what what I actually physically retire. I I have plans to be rolled into the water with floaties if I have to. <laughs> Because then, if my legs don't work for whatever reason, <sighs> and uh, yeah, preach. Halloween is also my probably my favorite holiday because it's one of the few where I don't owe a lot of necessity. And it's so the one time a year where if you see something strange, no one else really blames you, and ghost stories aren't socially and awkward. I love it so much, I keep at least two a year, being Halloween and my birthday, which this year will probably be a very quiet little thing. I guess that's okay, too. I, will I have no doubt. Steve, you would eat me in now. Steve, you would eat me in now from where you are to where I am. Aliens. 
And you know what? If the aliens want to kick in and help with this and make the world a better place, our leaders aren't doing a good enough job. As long as they're not pulling a V and eating us, I'm still not sure we're not not a prison colony slash uh like wildlife refuge anyway. But you know, you grow up studying things you that are out there, you kind of encounter the whole aliens. Oh yeah, sure. I have no doubt. No doubt. Although I like the, th the I have that's off topic and Glenn, you almost got me. You almost got me monologuing on things that not may not belong on this channel. But we got 10 minutes before the uh, two-hour mark. And um, I try to, at the half hours, uh, plug both my Patreon. Please consider subscribing and throwing me a buck. And uh, you know, look into my books. Like, share. Uh, if you've read them, please review them because that will help others to review them. And uh, follow Luke Stone Studios. He's the man I'm, I'm involved with for the work on hybrids, the, uh, the Sons of God RPG. And, well, it's RPG. He does the, the comic. So please follow that. It's There's going to be some exciting stuff there. All right. I think that's close enough to paying my bills on that front. What would you guys like to see me review next? I'm just curious. I haven't really ordered anything to review. Most of my money's gone to, you know, survival necessities and what have you. Uh, I was planning to review uh, there's a pirate cutlass polypropylene sword fo fo floating around, but I believe Steve has one for me, so I probably should wait till that arrives instead of throwing money at another one. Uh, I want to know, what, like I said, what do you guys want me to review? And... Uh, do you, what do you want me to? What do you think I should throw money at? Should should I just take this time when I get get funds, and try to upgrade my personal gear? You know, let, let me know. What's your input? Also, while I'm waiting for your input, because I can prattle, um, if you are writing something that might be related to this, like uh, Glenn was. As long as you're civil, I know something you don't. Know. Okay, um. So I know something you don't, and I'm going to continue to know something you don't, because I do carry a few secrets anyway. Get yourself good protection gear. Uh, I have to find it in Fatty McFatty size, and I'm still seriously thinking of trying to order a fencing jacket in a good Hawaiian print, but I have to pick the right kind. Because that would really... Do you know, there's still part of me that every so often sends a loving extended... The Carrie Fisher salute, if you will, to uh, to certain uh, regulatory organizations that uh, I want them to to tremble in annoyance that I still function and that I have not, in fact, ceased to function despite threats, intimidation. As you can see, once again today, the assassins have failed. Uh, character or otherwise but if you ever feel bad about yourself remember out there somebody hates you and might as well spite them if you won't stand up for something you'll fall for anything all righty uh let me see what's coming across the fields now um uh, we have uh what do i consider protection equipment well, I, I probably should have a mask that's newer than two decades old. Um, I'm torn because... Spite. Spite, yes. Protection equipment. No, protection is better than spite and faith. Uh, yes. <laughs> I approve of the glory of my friends right now. It's, it really is awesome. But, uh, yeah, people tell me I can't, and I've been doing it since. So, you know, That's what keeps me upright sometimes. Yep. 
faith in God, love in my, my friends and family, and service service to a bunch of people, and just spite. Oh, you know, I, I, my buddy has a hashtag, hashtag fueled by spite. And danged if I didn't, don't wish I didn't think of it first, but uh, I might even. I'm not sure, but concurrent brilliance is concurrent, and I'm not going to complain. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I am working on the strong sword. It got delayed because, unfortunately, contract work that I know will pay the bills right now has to uh, be prioritized over my own efforts, <gasps> at least for a while. Uh I don't know. So far, uh, Arcticon is still on in next February, which that sounds terrible, but with the reality of our world, that is the closest that I'm dead hard still saying I'm going to be able to attend. So the selling opportunities are a little low right now. So I got to work on the online stuff, and I apologize. But uh, the Strong Sword is still being developed, and... What will happen is one of these nights I'm going to wake up at like three in the morning with a headache. I'm going to come out and probably just like, Bleh! that's usually how things write. They, they, I don't write. Things write through me. I'm just a conduit of weirdness. But, ooh, misplaced my glasses. Well, it's easier than looking at myself. Oh, uh, let's see. Boop, and... Okay. That makes sense, and I'm glad you do. I want everybody. I want everybody to feel comfortable creating. So, um, yes, I have. If I were to hit the button and share my screen, which I don't know how to do, and show you my "Behold the Post-it Notes of Doom" app that is on my computer, you would see rows and rows and rows of projects. Um, I wonder. Give me just a second. Okay, cool. Wow, I can mostly see my screen. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I have 12 writing projects in the works right now. Two, three basic uh, mechanical projects. And that's not even counting the little one shots like making making the trainer of of this. Because I want to make a trainer of that. I want to make a trainer of one of these to see if they'll fight. And that's that's something, you know, I can't express enough how effective just getting a decent piece of cut, cut, uh, cutting board, taking a Sharpie, mark out the shape of whatever you actually carry. It would be a little hard with this guy because he's a little narrow in the neck, but... Make a trainer if you can't buy a trainer and practice with it so that you can see how things go. I'm a big proponent of that. But um, the uh, That is a project I have to crank out. I have some gardening projects, which doesn't apply here, but it's part of me making sure we have food if things go boink. When you start thinking tactically in one thing, you end up thinking tactically in everything. So, you know, a car not working is a major tactical situation. A house problem is a tactical situation. Everything has, has standards. It all gets stacked up. And I keep track of all that because that's what we do as as adults, as parents, as instructors, as authors, as creators. We have to organize so that we can accomplish what we want. Now, I still haven't gotten farther than this on this project, but it's still a solid little weapon. And I can't wait to get the second one set up and, and just play with them with somebody Um you know, I, I, there will come a day where I get to, to uh, use very pretty foils with, with my beloved Contessa, and I am looking forward to that. 
It, may, it might not be this month. It might not even be this year. But I still have faith. I have friends I haven't seen since this went down that I miss dearly. That's folks like Trelena and Joey, folks like Jim and Lito and got a couple new students who desperately want to come out, but I can't risk their lives or mine. And that's the reality of what I, what I do and what I am. I always got to try to keep the service up for everybody. So that's there. I must be prattling too much because I'm not getting a lot of uh, commentary. And it is going on 10 o'clock. So pretty soon I'm going to have to... Soon. You know what? It's amazing how much one little word will, will, will just make you feel better. The word soon made me feel better. Uh, I, I, I miss a lot of people. I miss you guys. And I love you guys. All you, everybody who comes on here, a part of me loves as platonically as is appropriate. But uh, that mean that doesn't mean I won't flirt with you. Have you met me? But uh, <laughs> let's talk about next week, guys. We're, we're two hours in. I need to establish what we're going to do next week. Uh, yeah, obviously I miss you. Uh, we're going to skip back because we skipped the. Uh, we skip the, the convention section, as in rules of combat conventions not getting together. We skipped uh, for, uh, sword and dagger and cloak. And actually, Red, I really need to have that laid out for you because that's going to fit your fighting style really well. I would, you know, you might actually really like a 17.5 uh, a inch bladed... Uh, stiletto for the style we've been working on uh, with or without a uh, company full length blade. I'm still tweaking that. I want to make something that flows and moves. And uh, for those who don't know, I develop when I have somebody who's been around a long time. Once we get past what I consider the, uh, the basic stage where this is how everybody understands fighting as core rules. We then look at how to break them to fit the individual style of somebody who doesn't already have an established style. In the Contessa's case, uh, it, uh, it involves integrating dance. It involves integrating distraction, diversion, very fluid, very light weapons, high mobility, uh, subtlety. It's going to be a fun style to really hammer together. Uh, for somebody like Jim, it was about okay, you are a wall. In D&D terms, the Mountain Dwarf and Defender. How do we maximize this? You, mobility limitations? Fine. Then your style is not to move. Don't go into tactical things where you have to and you're going to be fine. If you're not moving, we might as well up armor you. We might as well give you a big shield give you a rain a moderately long weapon work from there so that you you become a, a sort of bastion on the field uh Trelena's style is is one of the most unique and elegant uh active buckler styles i've ever seen now you can have a a passive or defensive buckler which is a shield more stationary rude or an active fluid moving and for trey it was a very you know Raptor clawed kind of thing, you know. Um, a lot of my own style was influenced by by a man named uh, Dennis Yakus, uh, Aiden McDougal, who, while we had differences, I will never uh, forget what I learned from him. Uh, and his style, because of some limitations, was very uh, abrupt. It's what I, I call my, my golden fiddler crab for those who've actually read the book. I don't know if I've got into this. I don't know if I will. It, it, it belongs in the book, I think. But it's an approach for a dagger and sword, especially when you don't have a lot of mobility. Where you make what the approach is, if you can only do one or two moves, you learn to only do them when they might work and then avoid everything else. It's very simple. But getting back to the source, the Contessa has a background in dance. 
Now there have been some injuries, age, these things happen, but the the groundwork is still there. So I want to build off of that to make something that you can flow to, you know? And it will be fascinating to see how that style comes out. And I'm working on some, some weapon designs that I will either have to manufacture or modify, but that's okay. These things happen. I'm all about helping people with that. Uh, Steve's, Steve's style is pretty much, I'm going to step on your throat and step on your throat and slash your foot. No, step on your foot and slash your throat. And that's okay too. Totally valid, hard punching, bam, bam, bam in. But I have some people I'd like to see him use that against because they might be able to counter it well. And that's what you do. You find people that it will, it, that the style will work really well against and you have them fight it for the, the purpose of the opponent. And then you have people that their style might get defeated by readily for the purpose of them. And it's it's a really, really complicated version of uh, Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock. You know? it's It just keeps stepping out magnitudes of... Like you have to keep track. Who is going... Whose style will be able to, to better fight that, whose style? And if you think about any... Any ensemble uh, fantasy or fighting show, you'll get that aspect. And you can look at it that way. Because if you've ever had the conversation, okay, um, most of you watched Game of Thrones. I've had elements. A lot of people were talking about, you know, Arya versus, oh, God. Now I lost the tall chick's name. I just see the bearded guy. But, you know, her how that bout was going you know, and how it did and taking the main, anytime you could take main characters and put them mentally against each other and think about how that's going to go. That exact same process is what a good instructor should be doing with people of different styles. The idea being, okay, fight, fight towards your strengths and learn how to recognize and deal with your weaknesses. For example, me, I am wide open on my big weaknesses. I did a PSA where a six-year-old had longer reach than me because I'm a hobbit or a gnome or something. Definitely near the brownie line because <laughs> there's always the part of me that, have you seen me go po <laughs> Bogart? If you ever see me go Bogart, you will never forget it. But my reach is limited. Little T-Rex arms. Yay! The only person I have fought who has shorter reach in recent years is um, is Steph, uh, my goblin barbarian, barbarian. Sorry, barbarian. You know, two axes. One of them might have strings, but uh, and the fact that they can go lower than me really messed with me. Fighting people shorter than me is really weird because it's not something I experienced a lot. I usually fought people who were a foot to foot and a half taller than me. So I'd be like, ha, low stance. I just, I'm going to snipe you in the nether regions because I can reach up, you know? But uh, yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. Okay. And no, I'm not. Somehow, I think the person who's stolen the image of a model who wants suddenly to befriend me in broken English is fake. Anyhow, we are past the, the two-hour mark. I've been all over stream of thought today. I hope you guys have been entertained. Um, believe it or not, I'm getting hungry. I burn a lot of juice doing these videos. Next week, we're going to definitely get into a Sword and Dagger. I couldn't make the video in the garage work, and I didn't have a lot of time due to uh, basically parental requirements. Those who know my situation know my situation, and that's enough of that. But uh, And the world's worst internet. So um, I'm going to be signing off. Feel free to keep commenting. Um, if you're creating stuff, plug, plug. Thank you guys. You guys are my heart. Uh, thank you for sticking around. 
Um, the folks who want to can hit me up in the messenger afterwards. It will take me about half an hour probably to get this just to upload because, you know, and finalize because my net is that bad. Thanks for putting up with everything, guys. Um, we're 11 weeks. That's nearly... <laughs> That's nearly four months. Uh, yeah. Four, three. It's nearly three months of uh, me live streaming and not being able to have you guys see fights. So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for sharing my page. Thanks for your support. And uh, as always, support your local sword master.